Hello and welcome to our human development sessions entitled Looking After Yourself. If you are wondering why this title, it comes from this little book uh, bearing the same title called A Christian Guide to a Balanced Life, written by Father Len Koffler, director of the Institute of St. Anselm. That institute used to be based in Kent, in Margate, Cliftonville, and now is moved to Rome. And I have the pleasure and the privilege of being involved with that institute uh, over a few years. Uh, why the contents of this book? Well, what I'll be sharing with you is based on this book. Uh, it will re rely on the contents of this book. Uh, and hopefully it will help us to enter into a deep spiritual journey. A spiritual journey that lasts a lifetime. Uh, a spiritual journey that is very fulfilling. A spiritual journey that has the ability to change and transform our life. It doesn't change the circumstances of our life in which we find ourselves in, but it does change our heart, it does change our thinking, it does change our perspective and our approach to everything that we do. So why uh, I am relying uh, on what I have received from that institute, from Father Len and from the whole team uh, that I have encountered during my time there. Part of the inspiration also is this time of lockdown due to the pandemic. We are called to live in a close proximity to one another. We are deprived in a real sense from many things that we used in order to have space for ourselves, in order sometimes to escape from ourselves and escape from other people. So, socializing, going down to a pub for a drink, going to the theatre, going to the cinema, uh, going to a restaurant for a meal with friends. So many things that we could enjoy easily, that we took for granted, suddenly we're not allowed to even do and enjoy. And so we are forced into a situation where we're not used to. And many people struggle uh, with that deprivation. Many people are really affected because it's not so much about the entertainment that is lost or these escape routes uh, that have been opened to us before. Uh, but this, this time is a real time of pain and struggle and sorrow for many. So many people losing their lives, losing their loved ones. So many people grieving. So many people losing their friends or worried for them in hospitals. Will they make it? Will they not? So many people being affected by lack of work. Where will I get the money from to support my family? And so the list, the knock-on effect of this pandemic is massive on all of us in one way or another. What this course hopefully also will show us is that we can use any time of crisis, any time of suffering, for a time of growth, for a time of real change and transformation. Essentially, what we're engaged in is a deeply spiritual journey uh, to enter into a deeper communion with Jesus, with our Lord. Because to become like him means to become fully human. And once we become that, uh, we reach real freedom, real happiness, real joy, real fulfillment. And so this is the point of our journey. At St. Anselm's also, we have our favorite image that many of you will know. And this is the image of the Holy Trinity. Uh, the image that shows us that this is the life that we are called to engage in. Our life is about a life of communion, of a deep relationship with the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And so hopefully in this course, in these short sessions, uh, I hope to summarize to you some of the elements of that deep spiritual journey. So it's not a self-help book or a self-help guide in any way whatsoever. Uh, it's about pointing us uh, in the right direction. 
It's about drawing on the wisdom of people like Father Len, who in turn has drawn wisdom from the rich Christian tradition and other people who have gone before us, before him, who made that spiritual journey and who are there to simply guide us in our own, to make us more aware and help us in that journey. And so where do we begin? Well, we begin by listening. And it ties in really well today with our Gospel reading from the Mass. Uh, today is the third Sunday of Easter. And the Gospel is about the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. It's about Jesus journeying with the disciples. And it's about Jesus, first of all, listening to his disciples. As our Archbishop John points out to us uh, in a letter that he sent out to his priests, uh, an important part of that reflection is to realize Jesus' almost strange question. What things? What are you talking about? What's, what's troubling you? As though he had no part of the experience of Good Friday. As though he wasn't there. Even though he was at the center of everything that they went through. Here comes Jesus asking the disciples, tell me about it. What's, what's happening? Share with me. And that's the value of being listened to. Because we all listen. We are all engaged in the activity of listening all the time. From the moment we wake up, we listen. We listen to the alarm clock, we listen to the news, we listen to the radio, we watch and listen to the TV programs, uh, we listen to other people. Uh, we are bombarded with noise. I don't know whether you can hear in the background, but my neighbor from across the road enjoys his radio on a regular basis here. Hours on end, constantly listening. He must enjoy listening to his music. I hope that the neighbors do the same. Uh, but we are listening. And it's important to realize the importance of it. Jesus realized it on that road to Emmaus. He knew that what was needed for the disciples to help them make that journey of transformation before they reached eventually that point where they recognized him, he listened to them. And he wanted them to open up, to speak. So how do we listen? Uh, we can think that we listen very well, but with so many things, uh, you know, we are so preoccupied with various things, and we will talk about them in the next session, uh, that sometimes it's not that easy, it's not that simple. But to realize, first of all, the need for that deep listening. Because what Jesus did in that road to Emmaus uh, is he helped those disciples to feel that they mattered. They were important to him. He was concerned for them. And it didn't matter to our Lord that he knew exactly what was going on. He knew what took place. He was interested in both of them. He wanted to find out from them what happened. How did they take it? How did they went through? And how are they coping or not coping with the current situation? So he's giving them the courage. And the courage comes to them because Jesus wants to listen. And that's what we are asked to do. Uh, we are given courage by God because God always listens to us. We can go to our room, close the door, uh, and we know that the Father who sees all that is done in secret is there for us. He listens. We can pour out our hearts to him. We can cry, we can levitate, we can meditate, we can do all that we want to do in that privacy of our room because we feel safe, we feel secure, uh, that he is there and he listens. And the point for us as we start this journey 
is to rediscover that importance of listening. And maybe to start thinking about how my journey impacts other people. Uh, because when I make that journey of becoming closer to the Lord and becoming more like Him, uh, I will inevitably impact on those around me. Jesus shows us that you can make a real impact just by learning to listen. And so as we continue with this course, continue with these sessions, uh, let us pray at the beginning for that grace to be able to listen, to learn to listen. And so we need to go back to that humility, uh, that we are children, and children continue to learn all the time. And so we, no matter what your age is, can continue to learn. I can continue to learn to listen all the time. So let's make it our prayer today. Uh, on this Sunday as we begin uh, these sessions. That in order to look after myself, in order to look after others, uh, I need to listen. And so as we continue to pray for that great gift of listening, uh, try it, because this is not about theory uh, by itself. Uh, be the one to listen to the person next to you. Uh, be the one who starts the conversation and say, well, tell me about uh, what's happening. Be interested in the other person's story. And it's amazing the effect that you will have on the other person. It might at first be uncomfortable. We might just not be used to being listened to. It might be very strange that suddenly you turn up and say, well, I'm interested. Maybe you haven't been uh, for a good while now. Uh, so you might be sh a shock to the system, to those uh, with whom you live. But that's precisely what we are asked to become. We are asked to become different. We are asked to have a listening ear, just as God has one for us. God bless.